Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay. We're going to learn about an artist who was a female. First female we've had this year. She is a very good example for the ladies in this room of defining what social standards are. We have to understand her time period. 1890s, 1890s. If you can remember Sargent, he was painting women and they shouldn't have shown their clothing or their below their neck. This was that time period. What happened with her? She was born wealthy in America. She wanted to paint. She wanted to be an artist. So her dad shipped her overseas. She applied to be in the academy. That's what it was called, the academy. Now, with the academy, they had certain rules that very, very, very much limited females. Females really weren't supposed to be in the academy, but they allowed certain ones. There was usually this stereotype that if females were in there, they would be the models. They would pose nude, or naked, as we like to call them in the art room, naked, for the male artists. Very chauvinistic. They wouldn't even allow females into the room while the males painted or drew from the model. So even if you were a female, you couldn't look at another female or male and draw them. So she couldn't get into any of those classes. And I will tell you this, I had to in college for three years, three out of four years, I was in that type of a class where you drew naked people every day. Here's why. The human form is the most difficult form or thing in the world to draw. It's very hard to capture an emotion. There's so many muscles and tendons and everything like that. that and you're trying to capture what's the essence of the person. That's the hardest thing to draw. So she wasn't allowed to draw from real people who were naked. So it limited her. What she did was decide that, you know what? I'm not getting anything out of the academy. Screw the academy. That's basically what she said. Screw that. I'm going to go to the Louvre. The Louvre was the most renowned uh, museum at the time. This museum is still the largest museum in the world. It had all the old masters in it. So she decided, hey, if they're not going to teach me, I'm going to go look at all these masters' paintings. And I'm going to draw and copy them and learn from them. And that's what she did. Finally, she became good enough that a very, very famous artist that we'll learn later on took her underneath his wing. That was Degas. We'll learn about Degas later. But she was good enough, and she learned from him. Now, I want you to, females in that, this room, take that. She is a very good example. All female artists have looked back to her because she was famous. She was the only female artist that was famous at that time. She defied all odds. She became very, very well, and she became very wealthy because of it. But it was because of her skill and her grit that when someone said, hey, you can't do this because you're a girl, she said, screw that. I can do that. Okay, so the females in this room, take that as a lesson. We're going to go through a couple of these. Keep in your mind, don't say it out loud, what is the main theme? So she wanted to document the relationship between a mother and child. There's this bond, this huge, huge bond between the mother and child, raising it. She wanted to document. No one had ever really in the history of art documented this type of relationship, and she did. So she decided to paint, but she also used pastels. She's one of the first artists that used pastels as a final piece. Pastels are chalk, basically chalk that you can use outside, but very nice. This is a pastel piece. One of the reasons why I really like her is she was a pastel, 
pastel artist. I am a pastel artist. Okay, let's go back here. This is a painting. This is pastel. I absolutely love this piece. Real nice and finished. And then she just leaves it unfinished. Cool. Different. Again, pastel. Her name, Mary Cassatt. Mary Cassatt. Style is Impressionism. We're going to hit Impressionism a little bit harder or talk about it more later. Impressionism. But the style is Impressionism. Mary Cassatt. What I would like you to know, what we had just kind of talked about. She is most famous for, here let me make sure it's the correct thing to say. Yep. She is known for her paintings of women and children. She is known for her paintings of women and children. Known for her paintings of women and children. That bond between mother and child. You will see, if you ever see anywhere, a painting of a, a mother and a child, it is most likely Mary Cassatt's painting. Whether in a history book, whether in, uh, I've even seen on child development books, where psychology books, this painting, or one of her paintings as the cover. Yes? Pastel. P-A-S-T-E-L. Pastel. Impressionism. If we look here, I'm going to describe this a little bit later with another artist, but I want you to kind of get the gist of what is going on here. Impressionism. There's the first part. Impression. We're breaking down the word. Impression. We just want a quick impression of what is forming here. You notice how streaky it is. Just going quick. A quick impression of where it's going. It'll make sense more when we talk about Degas and Cezanne and Van Gogh. But this is Impressionism. Impressionism. How do we remember? Mary Gassat, Impressionism. Uh, did I get everything? Yep. Yep. Here's the image I'm going to show you. Mary Gassat. All right, there's two little girls that have this little girl party at the beach. You know, we've got the sandbox, we've got the nice little dresses on, everything like that. We need a little music. A little music. So this little girl here is getting the music ready. Guess what she's using? A cassette player. A cassette player. She's using a cassette player.